Hi, I'm Ian Anderson. Welcome to this second course on Flash CS6, this one on animation. Let's get into the timeline and really have a good look at what makes it tick. The timeline is this window or this pane at the top of the interface. And at the moment I've got two layers. If I flick the visibility on and off, you'll see I've got a circle on one layer and I've got text on another layer. And it's always a good idea to name your layers so you know exactly what's going on on each one. You'll also discover that it's the best way to select an object is simply to click on the layer name. Now this reinforces one of my strong recommendations, which is to have one object per layer only. That way you can be sure of selecting only one object uh, and quite easily just by clicking on the name of the layer. A companion rule to that is that each item on its own layer should be a symbol. So you have one symbol per layer. Now we'll return to that in another tutorial coming up, but I just want to get that out there up front. If we have a look at the timeline, we'll see a few different kinds of frames up above. Now we've got the current playhead, which I can drag backwards and forwards by moving the little pink box in the ruler bar there. The ruler bar is marked by frames and given the frame rate shown here, I can estimate that it's just over one second. I've at 25 frames per second at the moment and I've got 30 frames so far in this animation. It is necessary in Flash to create frames so that you can put content in them. Now, before we get into creating frames, let's have a look at the different kinds of frames that we've got. If you see as I drag backwards and forwards that this text here simply appears or disappears and that's because it doesn't exist in the first 11 frames of this animation and then it suddenly appears in frame 12 and that's because of the keyframes. A black dot in a layer is a keyframe and a keyframe in Flash indicates a change in the content of the layer or the properties of the content of that layer. The hollow white circle at the beginning of this layer is an empty keyframe. So while there are frames here, the empty keyframe indicates there is no content. If I was to make a new layer, it will automatically create an empty keyframe and empty frames up to the current limit of the, the document. Before I created the new layer, I had frames up to frame 30. So now I've got frames up to frame 30 in my new layer here, layer three. There are some shortcuts which will really help you when adding new frames and they are F5, F6 and F7. If I click in some frame that doesn't yet exist in some layer, then press F5, it will extend that layer out to that point, adding these new frames in the process. I could click and drag in multiple layers at once and press F5 to increase the length of all those layers at once and get it all out to the uh, point where I need it to be. Now, if I select some frames and right click, I can do the same thing, but it's marked insert frame and you'll notice the shortcut is missing. It is, however, in the insert timeline frame option as F5. I would strongly recommend using the keyboard shortcut for this. Now you can remove frames in the same way. If I was to select a series of frames there and press Shift F5, then that will remove all the selected frames. If I repeat that again now, it will remove more frames. But the frames I have selected now aren't actually in the movie, so that's all I could do. Shift F5 will now not have any more effect. The thing to remember though is that you have to start selecting these frames for F5 or Shift F5 from a standing start. If I have a frame selected and try to extend my selection out, I will in fact move that frame, which will almost certainly do something you didn't intend. If you do do that, if you move a frame around and it's something strange happens, just immediately undo with Command Z or Control Z. Click off or somewhere else to select a different frame and then reselect the frame or frames you wanted to change. F5 to insert new frames or Shift F5 